my answer is that today, uh, in patients with advanced HER2 positive disease, we have so many options to consider. And they are so efficient and so uh, uh, that it takes us a long time, you know, to decide and to choose and to propose what's the best because we have Herceptin, we have Lapatinib, we have other agents that are under uh, 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 investigation that may be even better than what we have. So um, I think uh, it has changed dramatically. And today uh, the options are, are, are really um, uh, amazing. So I, I want to give you a positive note and you're going to spend a lot of time discussing with your oncologist the options. Uh, get ready for a long afternoon. So, so let me just expand a little bit on this. Uh, I think that it's important for everybody to hear because there were a few aspects to your question that I think we could again spend the afternoon on. The first is when we give Herceptin, which we call trastuzumab, that's the generic name, after um, or with chemotherapy after surgery, it reduces the risk that the breast cancer will reappear in another part of the body by about 50% compared to treatment without it. That's already had a public health impact. There are estimates that about 37% uh, of a 30% reduction in the incidence of HER2-positive metastatic breast cancer since 2005 when uh, Edith and um, Martine and um, others in the room reported the first results of postoperative adjuvant therapy. And this has actually done something it's very exciting to see, but it's made what Jose's talking about even a little more of a challenge for us. And it underlines how important this kind of international collaboration really is because the numbers of patients that have that kind of breast cancer in the countries with Herceptin has actually gone down numerically. So you can see that getting people to participate in research studies in that setting is even more important today than it was historically. The second thing is that, and Jose was, I think, vague, but I'm going to give you some, appropriately vague, but I'm going to give you some names to, to talk to your doctors about. And then people who are studying these drugs that I'm about to name are all in, in the room here. But in addition to Herceptin and Lapatinib, which is called Ticurb, you may have heard about, um, there is a dr another drug like, like um, Ticurb called Neratinib that's uh, been widely reported as active already. There are antibody uh, tweaks, if you will. There's a drug that's Herceptin with chemo physically attached to it called TDM1. There's a new version of a new antibody called, it's got a funny name, Pertuzumab. What's the brand name of that? Is it Omni? It, it, it Omnitark? has no brand. It, uh, no, Omnitark is, was the old name. But, oh, right. uh, but, but it's not ready. So Pertuzumab, we don't have a, a brand name for okay. that as yet. So that's in trials. And then there are class, there's an, another class of drugs that's in clinical trials called heat shock protein 90 inhibitors. And all of these things are, are as broadly available as possible at multiple um, sites around both the United States and around the world. So this is a place to have very careful uh, and patient discussions with uh, a treating physician to talk about the options and explore them fully.